Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we'll be talking about software patents, and in particular, some things to consider when writing a software patent application. Now, I've called this more software patent tips because I have talked about software patent issues on a few other videos in this channel, and I will put links to those in the description. But I thought it would be good to get everything in one video along with some other tips to share. So as a quick refresher, what are the requirements for a patent? Novel and non-obvious, which are sections 102 and 103 in the U.S. Patent Law, and patent eligible, section 101 of the patent law. Now for software inventions, the 101 section has become a challenge in recent years. The U.S. Patent Office issues a lot of 101 rejections these days, so we'll talk more about that shortly. Let's talk a bit about strategy. Software can live in a lot of places. It can live in the smartphone in your hand. It can live in a server on the cloud. We say cloud, but in reality, the server is most likely on land somewhere, in a data center, and not necessarily in the United States. And remember, a U.S. patent is only enforceable in the United States. We want to write our application such that it will be patent eligible. Now, I have a video dedicated to patent eligibility, and I strongly suggest you check out that video if you want to get a better understanding of the current state of things. Note that 101 rejections are sometimes called Alice rejections, named after the court case that made it easier for the Patent Office to issue these rejections. Okay, so let's say we make a software invention. It works on a smartphone. And here are some of our client devices all throughout the United States. And we have our patent application to cover what the app does. Now many apps rely on a server to perform some of the functions. Where is that server? If it's here in Canada, my U.S. patent doesn't enforce there. We could have a server in Mexico. It's spilling into the Gulf of Mexico a little bit, but you get the idea. My U.S. patent is not enforceable there either. So what can you do? Let's go into the strategies. We could file a patent application in multiple countries, but there are many, many countries that could host a server, and it's probably not cost-effective to try to file a patent application everywhere a server could possibly be. So again, this is probably the best strategy, to write patent claims from the client side and another set from the server side. Now, not every software invention uses a client-server architecture, but many do. So in such cases, then this may be a good strategy. One set of claims for the client and one set of claims for the server. Of course, not all software is client-server architecture. If the software is self-contained in an embedded processor and does not rely on internet data, then the issue of where does the invention live gets simpler and this issue may not be applicable in those cases. Let's quickly review the patent eligibility strategies. And again, I strongly suggest you watch the patent eligibility video to get more details on this part. And that video is in the description. If possible, put in your application any description of how your invention made the computer performance better. Could it sort faster, render faster, compress data faster? If anything you did with your invention makes a computer process faster than before, describe that in your application in thorough detail. If possible, put in your application any description of how your invention saved computer resources. Use less memory, use less power, less disk space, less swapping, less network bandwidth. Anything you did that saves computer resources, describe that in your application in thorough detail. Was there any special purpose hardware used beyond what is in a typical computer? Did you have to design a special sensor, an array of sensors, a new kind of accelerometer, thermometer, barometer, a special I.O. interface? If there's something like that, be sure to describe it in thorough detail in your application. De-emphasize what I call certain human activity in the claims. These can act like trigger words that seem to encourage a 101 rejection. And again, the patent eligibility video will explain this in more detail. But it can be topics like 
these things, risk management, sharing through social media, listing items for sale, tax applications, some of these things the U.S. Patent Office considers as patent ineligible in general. Now, that doesn't mean you can't get a patent for something in an area like some of the things you see here, but it may have to be worded in a way that the Patent Office would consider it to be eligible. It is important that your claims can't practically be performed in the human mind. That said, if your invention can process 3 million pixels in a microsecond to perform a low-pass filtering operation in order to produce a result, that is not something a human can do for practical purposes. So include the number of records, the speed of the processing, the size of the data. Sometimes these things, while they don't necessarily indicate novelty, can help make a case that the invention cannot be performed in the human mind, and sometimes that's important for getting past a 101 rejection. So in summary, try to have claims that map to a single location for client server systems. Remember, a U.S. patent is only good in the United States. And for the patent eligibility, include information that promotes patent eligibility, some of the topics we went over in this video. Now, this is a gray area. Each patent examiner seems to apply the current patent rules slightly differently. But by including the items that were discussed in this video, it can improve the chances of having the ammunition to overcome a 101 rejection if it should come up. So hopefully this uh, information was helpful. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. Check out the related videos in the description, and thanks for watching.